Right there, thanks for clicking on my video. Now, for some stupid reason, I promised you good people that I would do a bivvy a month. And uh, I've mostly stayed with it. Uh, but to get July's in, I'm just back from Berlin. And I've got Bella Drum Festival in a few days. And I'm knackered. So I'm absolutely forcing myself out there tonight for you good people. The good thing about this is when you go bike packing and stuff you get to hang out with some really cool people however none were available tonight so i'm having to put up with roberta walker again he has to put up with me i think i'm the one that has to put up with him <laughs> <laughs> needs, hello rob needs must wave to your fans Hi. <laughs> so we're in the spiny lock bar tide and you get all different kinds of birds visit this lock. It's a, it's a, a nature reserve. But it's like a greenhouse in here just now, so it's going to be a fleeting visit. Maybe I'll do stealth camp here one day. Probably not. All these defences here were built in the Second World War to defend against a possible German invasion. So you've got all the uh, dragon's teeth, which were fortified with barbed wire, and they prevented infantry and uh, tanks from coming in. And then these gun emplacements, they were fitted with six inch guns, and they were placed these circles of bolts here where the six inch guns were taken off all the other ships. This was all built by Polish guys who were stationed here in the forest. Would you like a six incher on standby all night, 24 hours a day? Absolutely. <laughs> We're debating whether it's worth camping in this one. As you can see, it's a bit exposed. And this here is the uh, Murray Coastal Trail between Lossiemouth and Kingston and Garmouth. So you're a bit exposed here. Yeah. You could go and hide down these but they're a bit grotty a bit grotty plenty of buildings around here though we'll find one to, to camp in Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Watch. 
sheltered enough, isn't it? <laughs> this is gonna hurt a fucking hate gores. It's the stuff of the devil, and not in a good way. Ow, ow, ow. There's quite a few buildings along here. The one we've chosen is an old searchlight house. I think there's two or three of these either side of the gun emplacements. And these had huge searchlights on them that they would light up to see if any German boats came along. And of course the guns would engage them. But this one is quite sheltered and quite well hidden. So we only make the most of this tonight and hopefully no one will bother us although it's been used before obviously by uh, the young team for a wee bit of a party or so but hopefully they'll stay away tonight do we turn up on a Saturday night that's not the time that the young team come out thinking is it Stan is making quite a big table I brought my trusty Aldi chair the 15, best 15 quid I ever spent that now Rob has brought our out kit soloist tonight but because we're already sheltered then she's only using the inner and not the outer so I'll be able to watch her getting undressed <laughs> except for I'll be in there <laughs> what, uh, what sleeping system have you got? I've got my trusty Oh, Sky High, what is it? 500? Yeah, Sky High 500 I've got Trickology my technology and I've actually got a cloud base today, Outkit again. Outkit Groupie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should be getting sponsorship off them. Yeah. Yeah. Outkit. If you're watching Outkit, then they Outkit sponsor bags. us. Yeah. Yeah. Outkit everything. In fact, my Outkit bag has got worn a hole in it, so if you're watching Outkit, I'll quite like one of them koalas and I'll praise it all to pieces. Uh, I've got the Outkit Hunker, a, a German army ground sheet that I thought might protect the Hunker from chafing. Uh, I've got this obscure bag called an Air Dewey, which doesn't really fit in the Hunker, so I may be very uncomfortable tonight. But Rob's just suggested if I don't fit in it, because I'm quite a big chap then uh, she'll swap with me. And I've got the Ice Flame Quilt, which I can't praise enough. That's a great bit of kit. Really like, packs really tiny, and yet fluffs up to be really quite warm. And we don't really need warm tonight. Although, they were saying that some parts of Scotland last night got down to four degrees <laughs> in July. And there's me in Berlin at 35 degrees just a couple of days ago. Rob being all civilised and all that has brought some uh, tortilla chips mm -hmm. with some hummus. And the ale watch tonight for me is a uh, vocation 
11 hex sour IPA, not the normal 11 hex, this is a 7.2% sour IPA, oh, which is very, very nice. Well, the normal 11 hex is about 5. Oh, right, uh, okay. 5.7 or something, so that's a stronger one. And we haven't known each other very long, you and me, YouTube, but if I've taught you something, then it is, if you're going bike packing and you're taking beer, go big or go home. So we've got the volumes, one a penny, two a penny, hot cross bun, Belgian double. Enormous. At a mere 9.2%. And I've only got two of them. And a vocation, love and hate. So if I drink all of them, I'll be on Mars. But just in case I'm not, I've got some whiskey as well. <laughs> Viking tribe. Right, I'm going to get stuck in these. Oh. Oh, hey. cool. So I've got a cupboard full of things that I bought. So I'm just using them up. So apologies for not being a gourmet chef and you're just getting a wayfarer pasta bolognese and a wayfarer chocolate pudding tonight. And then we'll have some compo chicken, sausage and beans in the morning. That's MRE for you YouTubers that have never been in the military. What you got Rob? Um. Um. <laughs> I don't know. Apart from a really bad memory. <laughs> wicked. It's wicked something coconut rice noodle something. Yeah. I don't know. Two packets in the Mylar bag. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> come on in, let us know how it is. It's delicious. Yeah, come on in. Yeah, oh, let's, oh. See, let's see you with Try, a gob full. Trying to eat it. Oh, it's a wee bit hot. Hmm, that's a little good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh Light, if you can hear me, it's probably not because of the wind, but that's the search light bit. We're in a machine gun box, and that's the two bits for the uh, for the six inch guns. And there's something along beyond there as well, probably another machine gun nest. But there's other buildings behind them, and I'll show you them soon. And there it was, gone, isn't it? See. Don't you wish you brought yourself a nice comfy seat like mine instead of having to get your old body up and down yeah. like that all the time? And it's sitting on the cold floor. Oh, it's not cold. Yeah. It's really toasty. Oh, well that. But, yeah, I could do without having to get up and down all the time. So. If I was a proper gentleman, I would, like, share my seat every now and then, <laughs> wouldn't I? I'd yeah. swap. But the F was a, is a big word. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Okay. Here's one. 
Then another shit one. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole heap of military history along this part of the coastline. Just further along that way is uh, a rifle range. And then you've got the longest unbroken section of dragon's teeth along here. You've got beaches with with the uh, glider poles, which stopped the Germans from landing their, their gliders during World War II. Uh, just behind you, that way, there's an old airfield called Mill Town. And then along the uh, the coast here as well, of course, you've got RAF Lossiemouth, where I was stationed for several years. Now today, uh, RAF Lossiemouth had a friends and families day and the Red Arrows did a wee display. Now I didn't go and bother watching any of that because I've seen it so many times it doesn't interest me. However, they flew over my house, so I got a little bit of footage and I'm going to show you that right now. Just there. Yeah. So here we are sat in the gun emplacement, machine gun nest. We might pop our heads up in a minute to see if Jerry's turned up. This could be a good time for a swing the light, pull up a sandbag story time. Over the hill came Dead Eye Dick, the only man with a corkscrew prick. He searched the world from pole to pole to find a girl with a corkscrew hole. When at last he found her, he fell down dead, for the poor old girl had left hand thread. Here's Jazz, what's well, like his damn few in the raw deed, Cunts. Cheers. Have some friends. Have some friends. It's that time of night when we find out. What else is out there? Hello, hello. Is there anybody out there? Just nod if you can hear me. Mm -hmm. 
no weird heat signatures tonight, but it's a bit freaky. The the graffiti has uh, different heat signatures on the different paints. That's freaked me out a little bit because you can see all the graffiti. Well, you can see some graffiti. Depends what paint they've used. That's pretty cool. I can hear a clunk. I can hear a clunk. I'm talking to YouTube. Go away, you. <laughs> no. Oh. God. I've got a headache. Yeah. I need a clunk and so Rob's up. And she was doing a FaceTime or something earlier on as well at 7 o'clock or something. She uh, I've slept okay. Is uh, the uh, sea pounding away out there? Makes a nice white noise background, which is quite good for sleeping. Uh, I don't normally sleep this late, so warm enough, comfy enough. Where's my girl? Uh, Artistic as hell. That's the way they landed when they were kicked off. Bit breezy this morning. Rob's got the T's on, big girl. You went for a pee, did you? Oh, well, Now about 18 months ago we had a storm called Storm Arwen. Now we get lots of storms when they come they come from the west. But Storm Arwen was unique in that it came from the north. And our trees are used to storms from the west, so when one came from the north, it just decimated them. Look at this. They all fell down. All, all our forests have all got trees all lying down in a north-south direction because they just weren't used to it, weren't ready for it. The roots weren't prepared for winds that strong from the north. We never get them that way. It was brutal. It's going to be a long time before we're recovered from that. There's just trees down on all the trails and things, even 18 months later. The important ones have been cleared, obviously, but some of the lesser known and lesser used trails we still have to climb over trees and when it's that bad just like little matchsticks aren't they now when you go bikepacking a heavy but essential piece of equipment is your battery pack for charging everything up it's essential there's no way of getting around it you've just got to carry it with you but if you forget your USB-C charger then it just becomes a heavy ornament that you've carried around with you for no reason whatsoever. So I'm a bit light of content this morning because I've run out of battery on my phone and on my, my action cam. But, uh, yeah. So apologies for the lack of uh, content, but we're just about packed up. It's only my shite that's lying around here. That's the crap that we're going to take away with us. And I've just got my German army thing to uh, pack up now. There's, it's, uh, it's all going to go in there, and that's us away. Hell of a windy. There's a hell of a cold east wind blowing, so I'm glad we're in this building. Otherwise, it would be really quite rough. Okay, one of the most important things to consider when you're doing this stealth camp in Malarkey is to not wear things that make you stand out. So you want to be like camouflage, blend into the background, something that's not eye-catching. So if people do happen to walk past where you are, they're not going to see you. So obviously you don't want to be wearing shoes like these. Or a jacket like that. <laughs> or a helmet like that. God. Anyway, that's us wrapped up. This is where Rob was. That's where I was.
I haven't picked up the burnt out cans that the young team left there last time they were here. Okay. Live in their own mess next time they come. Okay. This has been a successful camp. Yeah. Okay, this is one of the other buildings that we've got here. There's a few of them. These are called engine rooms. And they would have had a big generator in here for powering the such lights, etc. The beam on there. For the exhaust up there. Now this particular one really annoys me. Well, it doesn't annoy me. I think they're quite good. What annoys me is, for decades, a tree had seeded itself on the building here. And it was growing away on top of a concrete building. Its roots had managed to spread to the sides and down. And then the last time the forestry were in here clearing, they chopped this tree down. Bastards, it survived everything. It survived Storm Arwen. Survived everything. And then the forestry came and chopped it down. So I felt quite sad when I saw that. Okay, this bit here is called the magazine. It's a bit set back into the woods. And this is where they stored all of the, the ammunition for the six inch guns. Not one of the places. It'll be too dark for Osmo action in here. Uh, just a dingy little room underground. Not where you want to go camp. This is nothing to do with the gun emplacement at all. It probably predates it. Back in the days when we used to have salmon in our rivers, the river space just that way, a couple of miles. So they used to do uh, salmon fishing off of the coast here, just take boats out in nets and put them in a big loop and drag them back in and they would catch lots of salmon. And this is where the manis lived overnight. This is known as the Salmon Bothy. It's fenced off nowadays because it's not safe anymore. Fireweed. Dead-eyed Dick, the only man with a scope.